Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss about Fusarium again. As I was saying, I had a pretty bad infestation. I lost 20 orchids or more. Who knows how many are infected? I'm trying to pick them out. But we're going to try and save some of the orchids which can be saved. So, first of all, if you know me, you know that I like to know how things work to properly understand them so I can understand why I need to do what I need to do. So first let's talk a little bit about how this disease works and I think this will be very helpful in making a decision and actually spotting orchids infected with Fusarium. So after a bit of research I learned that Fusarium blocks the vessels responsible with transporting the brood sap meaning water and nutrients. These vessels are called psyllin. So pretty much with these vessels blocked, an orchid cannot hydrate herself, it cannot pick up moisture and nutrients. As far as I can tell, this disease does not affect the phloem, which is the vessel responsible with transporting the elaborated sap, sugars, to the rest of the orchid. And that gave me a bit of a new perspective on what I should be doing. So first, these are three orchids that I discovered with Fusarium, and I cut the old growth until I reached healthy tissue or at least it looks healthy. How I picked them up? Well, these orchids had quite a lot of roots, had a lot of older growths, but everything was dehydrating, even the newer growths. They were shriveling without any particular reason. And this is because the older growth, even if it had roots, could not hydrate itself and pretty much what it did was just to suck the elaborated sap even from the new growth, dehydrating it. So whatever amount of new roots these orchids had could not sustain the full extent of the orchid. So, I cut away all the old growth which was infected. As we all know, this is what is recommended for this disease, to get rid of the infected tissue that can infect new tissue, but also because the previous growth sucked too much energy from the new growth. So I did a little test. These are all new growths that I presume are not infected. They were all pretty shriveled and dehydrated and I left them in water for a few days, two days or so. And sure enough, the pseudobulbs hydrated themselves. This means that this particular growth is not affected by fusarium, the vessels are not blocked and this cane or actually the pseudobulb can hydrate itself and this is what I'm looking for. With this I can try to start a new plant. Leaving the previous growth would have been dangerous for one and second would have impaired the new growth that will form. Again, pretty paradoxical, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it. The only one that I think still needs some cutting is this one. This one hmm, did not hydrate like I wanted it to, also I'm not sure what this discoloration is. It might have been because of the hydrogen peroxide but I'm safe to cut this pseudobulb as well, take a look at it, because it doesn't have any roots anymore. All the new roots belong to this new growth and I'm gonna pot these guys up and hope for the best, hope that these front bulbs will start new healthy plants. So if you will, this is trying to save orchids with front bulbs. The darkness that you see might be sheaths. This is still a question mark, I'm not entirely sure that this is completely safe, I will give it a go, I'll try to save it, gonna spray everything with hydrogen peroxide and we'll see what happens. And by the way, if you're curious to know what orchids these are, yeah, this is the Peach Sun, beautiful orchid, this is the No ID Cat layout that I really really love and this is the Tropical Pointer Galaxy. And here are my orchids repotted. I do have major doubts about the evolution of these orchids, I really hope they will do okay. But with a disease like this, I'm not really keeping my hopes high. But we learned something for the future at least. If you ever have a fusarium case, this is how I would go about it if you don't want to use toxic fungicides and all other substances that can affect your health. So I'll keep you up to date with how these orchids will do. Thank you for watching, hope you found this at least interesting. Don't forget to rate this video below with a like if you've enjoyed it or a dislike if not so much. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Oh yeah.